Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our church worship service today on January 1st, 2023. It's hard to believe, but Happy New Year uh, to all of you. I joked with several people coming in this morning that I anticipated that those who were at church this morning uh, were in bed uh, about the same time that I was last night, which was certainly before midnight, but maybe you're braver than I am. Um, but nonetheless, we're very blessed to gather on this new year on the first Sunday of Christmas. Please remember that we celebrate the 12 days of Christmas, uh, and we have the Christmas season all the way up until the day of the Epiphany. Um, the season of Christmas, uh, in particular today, we have a very challenging gospel lesson in which we hear the death of those innocent children at the hands of, of King Herod. We welcome uh, you here today, and also to those who are worshiping with us online. Uh, please be attentive to the bulletin inserts and any updated information that you may have for us as we begin uh, this new year. Just a few highlights of the announcements. A word of deep gratitude for your faithful giving during the year 2022. We'll be anxious to share uh, those updates with you at our annual meeting, which you will see in the bulletin announcements is coming up on January, I believe, 15th. Um, but uh, certainly before that, again, a word of gratitude uh, to all of you for the ways that you have served so faithfully and looking forward to this new year. Uh, also, uh, we'll be resuming many of our uh, ministries uh, this upcoming week, January 4th, with our Kids Club, our Bible study on January 5th. Uh, next Sunday will be uh, Lessons and Carols Worship Service with the Indian Valley Cluster, and that will be held at Grace Lutheran Church in Hatfield. So it's nice to be able to gather together. So uh, please, if you're able to attend, be supportive of that. Uh, also, uh, we have the uh, Spiffy with our activities with youth and children and their parents coming up next Saturday. Uh, finally, I also wanted to point out, uh, as we begin this new year, it's often a time for reflection of the year past, but also the new beginnings that we may have individually and, as a, and also as a faith community. Um, I do hope that you feel that it's a hopeful time here at St. Paul's. Uh, I know that I do. I very much, again, appreciated the ways that you served in 2022 and excited to think about the possibilities for 2023. Sometimes it's good to remind ourselves why we do certain things and to be challenged to try new things. I was reminded this past week that a boat is the ancient symbol for our church, which signifies the vessel of salvation. And so the boat, uh, a picture of a boat, is often found on stained glass windows. It's often portrayed as our church. The image of the boat, the vehicle of salvation, still resonates in the word that we use for the central part of our sanctuary, and this is called a nave. The Latin word for ship is novice, and so whether you knew it or not, we gather in the nave for worship, or in Latin, novice, which means a ship. People gathered in the embrace of a ship, just imagining flipping in this church upside down, and that would be, again, the nave of the ship, the novice. And in this ship, we are protected by the harsh waves, but we are also sent out into the world in the ship to live lives of service and love. So perhaps as you are making New Year's resolutions to not eat any cookies or ice cream during 2023, God bless you for that. I will keep you in my prayer. Please remember those wonderful disciplines of faith that you, as I'm preaching to the choir, certainly live to. One is daily prayer, weekly worship, daily Bible reading, serving in and beyond the congregation, nurturing relationships with one another, and giving quite generously. And a reminder, if you did not pick up one of the Christs in our homes, those are located uh, in the rack on the way out to begin uh, that New Year's prayer and resolution. Those are all of our announcements on this day. We begin our worship service by confessing our sins and hearing the words of forgiveness. Please stand as you are able.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the Word made flesh, our life, and our salvation. Amen. Trusting the goodness and loving kindness of God, our Savior, let us confess our sin. God of life, you promise good news of great joy for all people and call us to be messengers of your peace. We confess that too often we hoard our joy, our resources, and our security. We nurture conflict and build barriers. We neglect the needs of our neighbors and ignore the groaning of creation. Have mercy on us. Where we are self-centered, open our hearts. Where we are reluctant, give us courage. Where we are cynical, restore our trust. Renew us with your grace and give us again the hope of eternal life in you. Amen. Hear the good news refreshed in the waters of baptism, that we are children of God and heirs of God's promises through the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus we are forgiven and redeemed. Sing with joy, for all the ends of the earth shall know the salvation of God. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, 
and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Amen. And let us pray with one another. O oh Lord God, you know that we cannot place our trust in our own powers. As you protected the infant Jesus, so defend us and all the needy from harm and adversity. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. And now we will hear our first reading today from Isaiah. A reading from Isaiah. I will recount the gracious deeds of the Lord, the praiseworthy acts of the Lord, because, all, because of all that the Lord has done for us and the great favor to the house of Israel, that he has shown them according to his mercy, according to the abundance of his steadfast love. For he said, surely they are my people, children who will not, I, not deal falsely. And he became their savior, in all their distress, it was no messenger or angel, but his presence that saved them. In his love and in his pity, he redeemed them. He lifted them up and carried them all the days of old. The word of the Lord. Be we will now read responsively Psalm 148. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise God in the heights. Praise the Lord, all you angels. Sing praise, all you hosts of heaven. Praise the Lord, sun and moon. Sing praise, all you shining stars. Praise, praise the Lord, Lord, heaven of heavens, and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord who commanded and they were created, who made them stand fast forever and giving them a law that shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deep fire and hail, snow and fog, tempestuous wind, doing God's will, mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild beasts and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds, sovereigns of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the world, young men and maidens, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord whose name only is exalted, whose splendor is over earth and heaven. The Lord has raised up strength for the people and praise for all faithful. The children of Israel, a people who are near the Lord. Hallelujah. A reading from Hebrews. It was fitting that God for whom and through whom all things exist is bringing many children to glory should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For the one who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one father. For this reason, Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters, saying, I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, here am I and the children whom God has given me. Since, therefore, the children share flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared the same things, so that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is, the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by the fear of death. For it is clear that he did not come to help angels, 
but the descendants of Abraham. Therefore, he had to become like his brothers and sisters in every respect, so that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God, to make a sacrifice of atonement for the sins of the people. Because he himself was tested by what he suffered, he is able to help those who are being tested. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, and let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the second chapter. Glory to you. Now after the wise men had left, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up and take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt, and remain there until I tell you, for Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother by night, and went to Egypt, and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet, Out of Egypt I have called my son. When Herod saw that he had been tricked by the wise man, he was infuriated, and he sent and killed all the children in and around Bethlehem, who were two, two years old or under, according to the time that he had learned from the wise men. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. A voice was heard in Ramah, wailing and loud lamentation, Rachel weeping for her children. She refused to be consoled because they are no more. When Herod died, an angel of the Lord suddenly appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and go into the land of Israel, for those who were seeking the child's life are dead. Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother, and went, went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was ruling over Judea, in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. And after being warned in a dream, he went away to the district of Galilee. There he made his home in a town called Nazareth, so that what had been spoken through the prophets might be fulfilled. He will be called a Nazarene. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I don't know about you, but I was not intending um, to come into this uh, place this morning, this festive time of year, to hear a story about children being murdered. For this gospel lesson today is a really challenging one, even as we are here this morning to breathe the last few breaths of the season of Christmas, to sing some Christmas hymns to enjoy the lights and the decorations, to take in a football game or two this afternoon, enjoy for many the final day off, and then we get back into reality, back to work, back to school, back to the old grind. But maybe many of us here this morning have never been that far away from your usual pain during the holiday season so that the sought-after cheer of the holidays was never quite found as the normal pain that you carry during the year was sticking quite close. For some of us, the post-holiday return to reality is to a reality that was never quite ever away. And perhaps it's good then that this Bible's sense of Christmas is well anchored in the human reality of pain and suffering and struggle. 
so that it could really bring us good news. And our second lesson from Hebrews today, I think, is a good example as it speaks of Jesus' coming into the flesh to save us. Not some angels, but us. Jesus came into the flesh not to gloss over the reality with fantasy of a holiday cheer, but to share in the very things that make up our lives, both good and bad. It says that he had had to become like his brothers and sisters in every respect so that he might pioneer for us a perfect way of salvation through the sufferings of human reality. Not around them or over them, but through them. And that's the good news for us this morning. The good news is that God helps us to face what is real and that we don't ever have to try to run away or escape from it. No, the gospel stories of Jesus' birth never wander far away from reality. Luke's story of Christmas that we heard on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day is the most pastoral and maybe the most peaceful, and yet even there is that cold reality that there is no room for Mary or Joseph under a roof. And so Jesus was born in a barn or a stable, and As Mary and Joseph brings the infant Jesus for his naming, the prophet Simeon tells them that this child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of so many will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. Our gospel from Matthew today is really the most poignant as Matthew expresses the theme of rejection directly with a story. Three traveling magi welcomed the prospect of a new king, but the local king Herod did not think so much about that, and so he responded with a kind of violence that we'd like to forget in our holiday cheer. And although Jesus is protected from harm at this point of his life, other children are slaughtered by Herod. And isn't that kind of the same reality that we go back into week after week, the kind of world that we continue to live in? We celebrate the birth of the Prince of Peace at Christmas, but this week we return to a world of terrible violence where innocent children suffer and are killed every single day. And so this is the point of the sermon where I am often tempted to find a nice story that might try to help us feel better and to make things right. But there aren't that many nice stories. There isn't enough holiday cheer to ever cover over the reality of these blessed and broken lives which surround us. But there is one story I know that can begin to make things right. And it's the story of the baby born in a barn who escaped death at the hands of the authorities as a child, but who does not do so as an adult. And it is only the fact that God raised him up from death that I can begin in this year, 2023, to have any hope at all. Because that resurrection is the promise that God does ultimately save us and this world from suffering and pain. That God does ultimately rescue us from the hands of those who would do us harm. I say that it only begins to make things better because 2,000 years later, there are children still being sacrificed by madmen like Herod. And so while we wait and watch the violence unfold, even in Ukraine that we have continued to pray for throughout this year, in spite of helping where it is that we can in our helplessness, the way of Jesus does not ever run away from violence, but faces it. By not ever resorting to the old way, though, of doing things, which is to fight force with force, nor stopping the madness by getting caught up in the same madness. But no, God gives us a totally new way to live, and that is always in the path of love. 
So as we enter and have entered a new year, we will walk in love and of service, of giving and helping. And with the hope that soon, oh very soon, the madness will end, even as there may be more violence for a time. And Matthew's story of Herod makes clear. When those who stand for the old way of doing things, like Herod, are confronted with this new possibility of life, they strike out with all that they could ever muster. But Christ-like love is the power of love that can stand tall, always in the face of it. And we who are called disciples are called to follow in this new way of love. Perhaps the best news is that God, in becoming human, took on our human nature and began then to transform it, to baptize it, so that we are able to follow in the way of Christ. And this is the good news for each of us this morning, that you and I, in knowing the story of Jesus, can stay on the path of love, stay in the ship of the church, and in so doing, we will become new creatures in the way of life. Our gospel today confronts us with the death of innocent children at the hands of Herod. As the birth of Christ does not remove the power of evil from our world, but its light gives us hope as we walk with all the holy innocence of the past generations and today who have and continue to suffer, suffer unjustly. And in our gathering around word and meal, God continues to redeem, lift us up, and carry us as in the days of old. So if you feel helpless, know that you and more importantly, we can begin to make a difference in the world. As we begin this new year, we do so again with the promise that we daily can become new creatures in Christ like that fragile holy family, our lives are held in the loving care of God. Deliverance is God's possibility and responsibility, not ours. And yet, like Joseph, we must decide how to respond to what we perceive to be the plan of God. We must act knowing that we will make wrong decisions, but then we will experience again and again in this faith community the promises of God. In our gathering around word and meal, God continues to redeem us, lift us up, and carry us as in the days of old. Amen, and blessings to each of you in this new year.
As beloved children of God, we now confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated or kneel for the prayers of intercession. With wonder and thanksgiving for Christ coming into the world, we pray for the church, the life of the earth, and the whole human family. Merciful God, broaden the church's hospitality and welcome. Open our hearts to any in need of refuge and help, especially those who are persecuted. Prosper the work of the Lutheran Immigration and Refugee Services. God of grace, living God, restore the health of the soil, the seas, and the air. Increase the joy and praise for all living things. In the coming year, strengthen local, national, and international efforts to prevent further harm to the environment. God of grace. Liberating God, deliver your people from cruel oppression. Increase justice in every nation and keep the dream of freedom alive. In this new year, bring the blessings of peace and put an end to violent conflict throughout the world. God of grace. Uplifting God, raise all who are bowed down by trouble and need, especially individuals and families living in poverty and those who are sick and suffering, especially for Stacy, Don, Roland, Tim, Al, Sharon, Ron, and Karen, Debbie, Diane, Barbara, Brian, and Jerry. As we continue to pray for Lee, Bev, Bob, Gloria, Barry, Brian, Gail, Bill, Alvera, for Pastor Jen, for Joanne, Dean, Rachel, Paul, Andrew, Claudette, Luke, and Fred, and for those that we name silently in our heart or upon our lips. Protect and nurture all children, sustain those who parent, teach, and care for the young. God of grace. Abiding God, accompany this community in this coming year. Increase our love for one another and the neighbors we serve. Enrich our worship and deepen our faith. Sustain our church leaders here at St. Paul's to lead with boldness and vision, especially in the ways that we serve those in the Telford community. God of grace. God of grace and new beginnings, as we have received faith in Jesus Christ, let us in this new year not be afraid. Bless each of us with good health and guidance, protection for those we love, and guidance for this congregation that we may grow in generosity and in service to others. In the year 2023, hold us close to you and to your promises. God of grace. God of peace, we pray for an end to the war in Ukraine and for peace wherever there is conflict and violence in the world. We pray that your spirit will sustain faith, resilience, and endurance of people impacted by war and conflict, and that we will persistently advocate for peace and provide relief and support to those suffering. God of grace. Loving God, the holy innocents who perish in every generation are safe in your keeping. We give you thanks and praise for all the faithful who have gone before us into everlasting life with you. 
God of grace. Pondering the mystery of eternal love made flesh in Christ Jesus, we commend all for whom we pray to the mercy of God. Amen. Please stand as you are able. The peace of Christ be with you always. And from your pews, please share that peace with one another. And let us pray with one another. God of abundance, receive and bless these gifts we have offered. Join our hearts with the songs of the angels and gather us at your table of celebration. Strengthen us to share with all the world the abundance of your grace upon grace. Pour it out in Jesus Christ, the word made flesh. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. In the wonder and mystery of the word made flesh, you have opened the eyes of faith to a new and radiant vision of your glory, that beholding the God made visible, we may be drawn to love the God whom we cannot see. 
And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which has been given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Join our prayers with those of your servants of every time and every place and unite them with the ceaseless petitions of our great high priest until he comes as victorious Lord of all. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. to God in the highest, come to the table of peace. Those receiving communion from your pews, the body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. You may be seated.
please stand as you are able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. And let us pray. God, our Redeemer, you have fed us at this table with gifts of grace, truth, and life. As you have gathered us in joy, send us forth as messengers of your peace. Make us shine with the good news of your glory, born to us in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light, and those who dwelt in the land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. We have beheld Christ's glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, and in him was life, and the life was the light of all humanity. Amen. Go in peace, Christ is near. Thanks be to God. 